Now tuning in to Earbud Media, audio for everyone. Cody? Yeah? I have an important announcement to make. Please go ahead. To you. So, as you know, I'm 23 now. Yep. And I've made some changes to my life. Here we go. Some big changes. Oh, boy. (laughs) So Buckle up, everyone. (laughs) So, since this was my golden birthday, I thought that I would get some treats for me and some treats for you because, hi. What? Um, (laughs) (laughs) So I, one of my treats to myself was that I scheduled a spa appointment because, hi, treat yourself. And one of my small treats to myself and to you was that I got a pop screen, right? Because, yes. hi, it's good for the podcast. AKA a microphone condom. Microphone condom, yes, important. <laughs> um, the other thing, and this is mainly for myself, but also for you. And no, Cody, this is not a joke, but I became an adult over the past week in the fact that um, I got a subscription to a particular service. Oh yeah? I did. And that service is called Netflix. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. That was a actually. really quick turnaround. I wasn't expecting... I was expecting so, us to go for a full year before we actually even considered... So get fucked, actually, Cody. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, joke's on you. You're the one who's paying for Netflix now, so get fucked, capitalism. Well, I mean, until Netflix decides to, you know, give us a coupon code or something, so, I mean... Listen... Could you imagine if Netflix started sponsoring podcasts? Like, how famous would you have to be as a podcast? I mean, I know that they do Maybe ads. Mark Maron has a Netflix sponsorship. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I know they do ads for YouTubers, so... Just oh, boy. Soon. soon. What if this... Like, what if you, we get to the middle of this podcast and there's a fucking ad? Like, <laughs> joke's on all of you. <laughs> get fucked, everyone. <laughs> so, those are my big changes. How are you, Cody? I'm great. I haven't had as many life-changing changes, so. Oh, well, that sucks for you. I'm just, I'm just living. I'm just living in, like, the end of the quarter, pulling my hair out vibes, which is real oh. chill and real nice. I mean, also mood, so. <laughs> <laughs> big mood. It's a big one. Yeah. In ex- other exciting stuff, we have been working with Queen of the World, Maddie Padilla, boy, to boy, get boy. our merch. Boy. So, that's exciting. Boing. Yep. Boing, I boing, boing. sent that stuff out to production this past Ooh. week. Yes. So that is V exciting. They're super cute. So be excited. Yeah. I'm very curious how the production company felt when they emailed me the proofs of our merch and it had some very interesting and choice words. Um, and choice images on there and they were like hey did (laughs) these look the way that you wanted them to (laughs) are you sure this is what you want yep and i sent back just a thumbs up emoji and was like great job josh just sent them right over to the printer (laughs) i'm very happy with how that's all working out cody how excited are you to do the next blooper reel. I, I was literally going to make that announcement, but thank you for Please just go <laughs> jumping in. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> so, um, if you're new here, you may not know that we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash into the toilet, um, in which we wow. post a lot of... But <laughs> excuse me. Can I do my ad, please? Or are you just going to cut me off at every turn? Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> so, on that Patreon... We upload a lot of bonus content, a lot of bonus audio stuff, and the last thing we did was, like, a compilation of all the bloopers from, quote-unquote, season one, aka when we talked about Twilight. So, 
if you want to hear that and also hear the new moon one, which will be ready in a couple of weeks probably, patreon.com slash the twilight for as little as a dollar a month. You can get that sick, sick audio and it's very funny and great and... If you could imagine stuff that we would ha- need to cut out of this podcast <laughs> compared to what's actually in it, like, it's good stuff. It's fun. It's one of my personal favorite times of every, like, quarter, I Yeah, guess. quarter is accurate. <laughs> because I have literally no idea what's in it. Not Usually only, I don't either. Not only because I forget what we've discussed after every recording session, so like there's no idea... I have no idea what's happening every week, let alone what's happened every quarter. So I am very excited when these <laughs> blooper reels come out because it's a rigmarole, gym jab of everything that's happening. So I get be excited. Why are you a grandpa? <laughs> I'm just a very old person. Listen, the past week when I turned 23, I started thinking about getting a cream for my décolleté, okay? Oh it's my been God. a wild time. I've been very reminded that Who life is fleeting. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> it's been a wild ride, okay? You're a wild gal. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hey, speaking of gals, um, <laughs> we have made some changes in some of our, like, branding and stuff. And I felt like it was important to remind folks since we've been getting a whole bunch of new folks listening to this, mm-hmm. thank you, Chris. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Especially Rachel, because I, I mean, I know that Chris. <laughs> well, wow, fuck to you, this Chris. Too. You didn't do shit. Yeah. For a <laughs> Shut up, Chris. God. Um, <laughs> what do you think you are? <laughs> anyway, Queen <quit>, Rachel. <laughs> Bow um, down. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been getting so many new folks, not only because of the ad, but also because Rachel and Chris have been stands of this, which I very much appreciate because I adore them. However, that also means that a lot of folks are just like listening to this mm-hmm. and not necessarily checking out all of our stuff. Totally fine. Yep. That just means that we need to introduce you to who we are, which I thought we could do for just like 30 seconds. So. Great. <laughs> my name is Allie. I have a lot of feelings about Twilight. I go by the pronoun she and her, and I live in Portland, actually, but in my soul, I live in Forks. Oh my god. <laughs> my, I mean, is my it wrong? spirit? My spirit lives in Forks. It's not wrong. I mean, I've been there enough times, basically, so. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. And, oh, and I've never met Cody. Well, listen, we've met, our souls have met. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so cute. <laughs> Shut up. Ew. Okay. Gross. I'm Cody. Uh, I live in Chicago. I hate everything that's happening right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my pronouns are they, them, so please do not call us ladies. Thank you. Uh, Thank you and much. I love Carly Rae Jepsen, so <laughs> that's really important to me. That is the most important thing, actually. Yeah. Allie's soul lives in Forks. My soul lives as Carly Rae Jepsen being my wife. That's what that is. And Kristen Stewart is your wife. Listen, we are, this is already... We all know this. <laughs> and so is the moon. And so is... Listen, I have... I, I get around. I <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Cody just has a lot of feelings, okay? I do. I have so much love and I have to give them to so many people. A.K.A. Cody is a cancer, if you weren't aware. Big mood. <laughs> Big moon. Oh my god. Hey, speaking of moons. God, I'm fucking goddamn. <laughs> this has been let's, the most buckwild intro <laughs> we've ever let's, done. Let's talk about New Moon. The we movie. fucking watched this garbage shithole movie. <laughs> it's trash. It's fucking trash. Uh, I'm so excited to hear uh, all of your thoughts about this movie. Okay, so before we, like, do a deep dive, I want to, like, actually say, like, the things that I liked in very loose terms. <laughs> oh my god. About this film. Please. Before we literally tear it to shreds, because my god. Tell me everything, bad film. please. Just as a recap, this came out in 2009. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. 
The main thing that I liked about this movie is that it didn't feel as long as Twilight felt as a movie. You know what Fair. I mean? Yeah. Like, they were both around two hours, which is an ungodly amount of time. <laughs> like, it is too long. Yeah. For a Twilight movie. But Twilight felt like I was sitting in molasses and just, like, oh my fucking God. trudging my way through for, like, four years. Yeah. Well, this new moon actually felt like a well-paced, action-y type movie, you yes. know? Like, it didn't feel like I was sitting there for, like, two hours, which right. was nice. But, I agree. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to have, like, a list. Okay, okay, I have, like, another thing. There was one, it was, like, a very small thing, but, like, there was, uh, the editing is bad. We know this. It's, oh God. But there was, like, one <laughs> scene in which the color correcting was, like, actually very good. And it Go was on. where Bella was on the motorcycle being buck wild and, like, almost jumping off a cliff and it was really chill. And, but, like, it was really nice. And I feel like we're separate a little bit from the color correcting of Twilight, which is just, let's just put blue on everything. I right. hope it works. Moody, moody forks. Done. And it just doesn't make any sense and it looks really weird. It didn't yes. feel like that in New Moon. Like, it felt like there was a bit of different direction going on there, so it didn't feel like as cheesy and cartoony as Twilight did. Yeah. So. <laughs> it felt like a movie, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Which is odd. So, you're touching on some very important things here, and I think that both of those were important points that Chris Weitz, the director, mm-hmm. wanted to bring into this film. Because mm-hmm. New Moon is a significant departure from Twilight. Absolutely. Uh, and the idea that Catherine Hardwick had for the Twilight Saga, that's for sure, which was <laughs> blue, basically. Yeah. Like, not blue even, the movie. <laughs> not even gothic, not even supernatural, just, like, blue, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. And it felt like there was, like, actually thought put into, like, what people looked like and what people wore and stuff like that. Like, and yes. I guess it's easier with, like, when you have the Voltori, which have a very significant and specific style. But, yes. like, I felt stylization throughout certain things. Like, it felt like there was thought put in behind certain things. Right. The The way that Chris White's envisioned this was he wanted a, a warmer color yeah. palette, for sure, which definitely comes through yeah. with this. I mean, he said that he wanted golden tones, mm-hmm. this is definitely stuff that was inspired by Italian paintings and obviously the Volturi. Right. Um, and that, like, it kind of all started with Jacob's house being red, but that he didn't want the, the color to dominate the film, mm-hmm. yeah. but to start kind of really at the climax of it, where they go to Multipusano Mm -hmm. and it to kind of explode from there on, which I think is clear, because once they leave... And that's, like, actual film stuff. Like, right, yeah. It's, like, color should be, like, as a tool, should be, like, you shouldn't be actively thinking about it, because that's how you know you've gone overboard, or, like, it's not done right. Right. In Twilight, I was like, everything is fucking blue. I want to kill myself. <laughs> Whereas this, like, I didn't really notice it. Like, I noticed certain parts. And I was like, this feels too good for a Twilight film. Right. But, like, it didn't feel like I was actively being like, mm, this coloring is different. Mm, this coloring and then thinking about it. It was just, like, did all the things it was probably supposed to do intended. Yeah, I think this one definitely feels warmer. And I think that the warmth definitely... I don't know, kind of seeps into how you feel about it, too. Because even, I don't know, the the warmth comes into, I don't know, everything about it, too. Mm-hmm. Because it the warmth comes into the idea of Bella's life, right. too. Because she doesn't have vampires around, too. Mm-hmm. So her life feels warmer yeah. because there aren't supernatural things around there, too, right? Yeah. And also Jacob's around, mm-hmm. so it's, like, literally warmer, <laughs> too like he's a warm boy right yeah (laughs) so it's just the idea of it kind of seeps into the characterization that's there too so it's and especially when you're working with a visual medium like you have to like part of your storytelling is with color and when with those visual elements so like when we were in twilight and everything was fucking blue like we were pretty much as depressed as Bella was in Forks, being right. like, "Ugh, please God, get me out of here." Yeah, and I was like, "I don't think that's what you wanted, really." No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Since we're touching on kind of the the exterior components of it, how did you feel about the visual effects of it with uh, like the wolf boys and stuff? Uh, 
mean, I mean, like, I, I wasn't mad at it. Like, that shit is really hard to do, and I, like, it's, you know, whatever. It didn't feel super, like, fake and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. I, like, we were already dealing with fanciful, fanciful stuff. Yes. Especially with, like, the vampires and, like, their super speed running, which is still, like, sure. the worst thing I've ever seen. But, like, I don't know. It was, like, fine. I didn't really have too many qualms about it. It was just kind of like, this is a lot, but we're already in this. I'm already balls deep in this shit, so, like, whatever. <laughs> oh my God. Let's just going on for the ride, I guess. So, a couple facts about the visual effects. <laughs> specifically, the Wolf Boys. So, they used two studios for it, because this is, like... I don't know. This was way back when it feels like, like <clears throat> the 2009 with CGI shit. I right. mean, it's not because Avatar, but still. I mean, these this was a lot of like animal stuff. I don't know, like real life furries. So it's a <laughs> lot. Um, so they use two studios anyway uh, to get the, I don't know, all the visual effects people to understand how to do it more they had the studio people go to a a wolf sanctuary outside of la (laughs) to study wolf culture tm wolf Um, culture (laughs) so they had to i don't know not like because you can't like play with wolves Mm -hmm. um but like to go and like observe them and understand their behavior more so that Mm -hmm. when they were trying to construct these CGI wolves, they'd be mm. able to do so and understand the mechanics of them more, which I thought was interesting. That's very um, interesting. When I was like watching the, I don't know, the behind the scenes of them constructing it, it was actually terrifying mm. to see <laughs> these like fake muscles being constructed. Absolutely not. Not okay with it at all. But it was very weird to me. Mm. So since we're still talking about the exterior stuff, We should discuss casting. We should discuss casting. We should discuss casting, um, especially because of the fact that Taylor Lautner was not, uh, he was almost not a choice for Jacob. Really? That's interesting. Yes. That is why he became beef boy in this. So, like, Um, because he was obviously in Twilight, so were they going to be like, nah, let's do a different dude? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So when Chris Weitz took over for Catherine Hardwick in this, um, he wanted to make sure that this film stood up to what the book was. Sure. And he just didn't feel like, at the time, Taylor Lautner's like, build in Twilight fit the kind of transformation that Jacob went through yeah. in New Moon. And, and he's not wrong. He's, like, the opposite of what he is in the books. Like, this beanpole, like, 6'8", <laughs> dude. Yeah, exactly. And so in order to make sure that he kept with that role, um, Taylor Lautner had to gain, like, 30 pounds of muscle and just, like, beef the fuck up. D- and he uh, did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, and so when they went back to filming, um, K. Stu said that he looked like a completely different person and, like, didn't recognize him at all. Damn. <laughs> so. <laughs> he yeah. did that. He Chris Pratted before Chris Pratt did. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, Chris Pratt didn't even know what was coming for him at that time. Oh, my God. Yep. So, so. on casting... Yes. Did they get a new, what's her name, <laughs> the vampire chick? Yes, they did. Okay, because that's what I thought, because I was, there was something a little bit different. I was like, I wasn't sure if it was like her hair, because I remember in the books it was like more like wild, spiky stuff, so I wasn't sure if that's what it was in like the movie Twilight. So I was like, is that? But then I realized it was still like the curly, big, like red hair or Oh, whatever. you're talking about Victoria? Victoria, yes. They just changed her hair. Okay. It's the same girl. Great. Yes. It doesn't change until the next movie. Oh, so they do end up getting a new... <laughs> they do end up getting a new girl. Damn, yeah. I'm just, like, envisioning the future. <laughs> yeah, her... It's just that her hair is a lot more vibrant. Yeah, she definitely looked movie. different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in Twilight, it's more like a strawberry blonde... Yeah. ...kind of color. In this one, uh, it's like Victoria... Got like a nice dye job or Ooh, something. She did that. Because 
it's hella vibrant. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, because it especially during the swimming, like when they're in the ocean, mm. uh, that strawberry blonde would not have come through. No. no. <laughs> Since we're talking about casting, I want to know your thoughts on the Volturi and who they chose. Um, I mean, I don't know any of the actors, but... That's okay. Okay. You they, can just call them by the Volturi's names. I mean, they look like pasty vampire dudes, so like, <laughs> you don't know... How did you feel about Dakota Fanning, though? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. She's great. <laughs> Although, okay. like, the context that they gave her are, like, so big. <laughs> oh, my God. And she's, like, she's like a small person and, like, has yes. a small face, understandably. Yeah. But, like, they gave her these huge eyes that make, yeah. they look so wild. And, like, a, like, red eyes, regardless, would look wild. But, like, it was very distracting. Yes. I mean, I guess that was the point. But, like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I felt like, and I understand that the the makeup in that scene is meant to look dramatic, but mm-hmm. the whole thing kind of, like, threw me off a little bit. Oh, yeah. Aro in that scene is Michael Sheen. That's the guy. Um, and it, it always throws me off because he, in real life, has, like, a British accent. Oh, damn. And so when I listen to the behind-the-scenes stuff, it, like, always throws me. <laughs> um but everything about that is weird. Um, so did him and Robert Pattinson just, like, bond over having to have these ridiculous the, accents? <laughs> yeah. Most of the Volturi have British accents. It's really wild. Wow. To me. Yeah. It's weird um, that they wouldn't just keep them, right? Because, like, if, I mean, like, obviously it's not, like, Italian. But, like, if they're, like, another, like, class of vampires or whatever, and all these dudes, like, have this accent, it's, like... I know. It probably sound more realistic than these weird, like, pompous trying to be, like, old Eastern European, like, stuff, you know? Can you imagine if they had, like, a Texan accent or something? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're expecting Aro to have, like, a really classy Italian accent. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, from Alabama or some shit. <laughs> Carl's like, yeah, I don't know what happened. I just... <laughs> His voice box is off today. <laughs> That would be fucking wild. That'd be I can't so even great. imagine. Oh my god. Holy shit. That holy oh my god. That would mess me up. The one thing too, before we start talking about the plot, um <laughs> Rosalie's wig oh fucking threw me this whole oh. movie. <laughs> I it didn't look real at all. No. They didn't try uh, with that hairline at all. Taylor's wig looked fake. Obviously. Even Kristen's wig looked fake. Yeah. At some points. Like it, oh, it, oh, I know that their budget was still kind of off at this point. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't have the Eclipse budget yet, but y'all, come on. <laughs> Do better. Blend, please. Yeah, it's like they used the same exact wig that Taylor Lautner wore in Twilight and just plopped it on this new beefcake body. And I was like, this will be fine and proportionate and look good and yeah. just as real as it did the last time, which it didn't even then. God. The BBs on Drag Race have better blending than this. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, obviously they have better blending on Drag Race. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's true. But, like, come on. (laughs) God damn it. We should probably talk about the plot. (laughs) I mean, I guess. I mean, it's basically the book, but not 600 pages. (laughs) But, like, let's talk about stuff that they did differently, because that's what we did for our Twilight one, and that was fun. Yes. Yeah, there are some significant differences. Yeah, the boys. 600 pages. Buckle up. Because they had to condense this shit down. Otherwise, it would have been four and a half hours at least. Honestly, I would have loved that, Loki. <laughs> Allie, God. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm divorcing give, you from this podcast. <laughs> give me a Netflix series. It's all I've ever wanted. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first difference. And honestly, a good one. Bella mm. doesn't work. <laughs> Thank God, she deserves it. It's too, it's too hard honestly. on her. Which means no Mike Newton. Fuck yeah. Mike Newton. He's which, barely in this movie. It's a godsend to me personally. <laughs> um, but also that means that she really is only relying on her college fund money for this. Yeah. To fund the motorcycle project. Uh, which, yikes. Girl. So, no good. I don't like that. The Port Angeles motorcycle scene is a uh, little different than in the book. Mm-hmm. And not really in a good way. No. In a really bad way, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> However, it did lead to more Anna Kendrick time. 
yes. in the movie. Which was great. But a lot, a lot of gross Anna Kendrick lines that a I lot wasn't of gross a fan Anna of. Kendrick lines. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. they... I think they also changed it a little bit because didn't they see, like, the movie they were supposed to see with Mike and the boys and all that or whatever? Because they were talking about, like, zombies and shit. And, and she was like, I don't want to see this movie. It's silly or whatever. And, like, they see these motorcycle boyos. And <laughs> Bella's like, they seem like nice dudes. I'm going to say hey. And Anna Kendrick's like, no, nah, man, let's not, though. We could just not do that. Like, she, like, walks up to them to see Edward and stuff in her brain. Right. But then actually gets on the motorcycle that this dude has, and they actually go places, like, around the block, and it's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's wild. And because of that, there's no McDonald's in this scene. Yeah, so. which is a, a bummer, but I get it. It's a real bummer. <laughs> but And, like, leading up to that, Anna Kendrick is doing all this stuff that's, like, See, I get, like, that you're depressed and stuff, but, like, you've been depressed for a really long time, so, like, maybe you should just be happy and stuff like that. And I'm like, ooh. My no. cousin that has leprosy, it's not funny. That, no, that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. She was, like, making all these, like, leaps and bounds for this, like, zombie movie that was, like, if this is a commentary on, like, capitalism and stuff, like, what are they even doing? And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> oh, I love this so much. Right before we watched this, had just finished her audiobook, The Scrappy Little Nobody. Mm. And I found out that when she started filming Twilight, she was 23. Holy shit. I know. Wow. She looks 16. She's a child. <laughs> yeah. She's which a little means, baby. Yeah. Which means that she was probably like 24, 25. When she was filming this one. That's so wild. I know. Because she looks like a high schooler. Oh my god. <laughs> Which is basically the whole plot of her book, basically. Literally. So, yeah. Uh, so that was good. It was a very weird scene, but it's nice very to have Very gross some and more. nasty. Oh. It's really gross and nasty. But it was, on the bright side, nice to have some Anna Kendrick. Speaking of gross and nasty. <laughs> please. Please. So... We have, uh, if you all remember, the just god-awful scene of Bella and Edward sitting on her couch and watching Romeo and Juliet together and, like, talking about the Votori because that's what you do when you date a vampire. Uh, that yeah. happens in a classroom this time. Yes. Which is wild. Like, I get it in the sense of, like, hey, you're all, although I wasn't aware that they were even in the same class. I don't know how, when that happened, but... You know. You know, but it's, a, it's, it's a convenient, so it makes sense. <laughs> but, like, so they're in the... He literally, the English teacher rolls out the projector on the box and just, like, plugs it in was a so movie. Bad. And he's also mouthing every single word to this movie, and it's so it's bad. It's so bad. It's so <laughs> bad. And then they're literally in the back of the class, in, like, all the other rows are, like, long rows, and there's, like, ten kids in each. And for some reason, they just have, like, a two-seat situation. Yeah. And I don't know how that happened. So bad. But whatever. And so they're watching Romeo and Juliet, and while they're all watching a movie, like, it's a very small classroom, and they can all hear each other. Yep. Edward starts, like, fucking talking about these bad boy vampires. Like, it's what? The worst. What? <laughs> it's ridiculous. And so nasty. Oh, and gross. And then fucking... The teacher calls him out for talking, which he should, because fuck that disrespect. Not in my home. Not in my classroom. Yep. And then he's making sure he pays attention, and then Edward busts out this fucking soliloquy from Romeo and Juliet to prove he was paying attention. <laughs> and I literally shed my skin, took apart my bones, and just buried myself under the floorboards yeah. of my home. <laughs> yeah, that teacher was the worst, honestly. <laughs> I, ugh. No, thank you. It was very true. Also, how the fuck ha have they... They're all seniors at this point, right? And they yes. none of them have seen Romeo and Juliet ever in their academia. What the fuck is going on in the school? What is happening in Forks Education? Yeah, I... As a almost English teacher at this point, one of the sections that we're being taught is how to structure our units and mm -hmm. Romeo and Juliet is definitely a ninth grade English yeah, unit. Yeah, I was literally in ninth grade when I read and watched Romeo and Juliet and like yep. the fact that 
Like, maybe not reading it, sure, whatever. But the fact that none of these people seemed familiar with the concept of Romeo and Juliet, because some people were crying, some people were, like, very emotional about this movie, and it was very unbelievable. Yep. Like, y'all are 18, you don't know Romeo and Juliet. I know. It's not even, like, a bougie, like, thing that, like, you should know. It's a cultural phenomenon. Like, you don't even have yeah. to read it. You know not even American culture. Like, no. worldwide culture is steeped in Romeo and Juliet. Billy Shakes is, is in all of our lives. <laughs> I know. It's everywhere. <laughs> He's it omnipresent. Was, <laughs> it was the worst thing to yeah. have him recite that. It was honestly the worst thing I've ever Also, heard. can we talk about Bella's look in that scene, though? Oh, my God. The gosh. fact that she had that vest over that <laughs> long sleeve shirt. Fucking hell, I cannot. Uh, can you tell what year this was taking place in? Cause I can't. All I could imagine during that scene, even though it had that old school Romeo and Juliet movie playing in the background, was fucking Macklemore just like singing in the background. Was oh like, my god. I gotta pop some tags. It was so bad. Like, I. I there cannot. were some really bad costumes, but there were some really fucking sick costumes as well. Like, everything that Alice wore, fucking put it on my body, bury me in it, I love it. Like, her <laughs> Rome look, when she was, like, a getaway driver, was fucking sick. It was so good. Oh my god, She had god. this cool yeah. little scarf around her head, and she had a sick jacket, and it was very nice. Very clean. Yeah. It was very... I don't know, getaway Barbie, but it was also, I also cannot have any sun on exactly. me or I will glitter kind of thing. I loved it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it was very nice. It was V good. So we definitely need to discuss the fight scene that did not happen at all uh, in the book um, uh. when Bella goes to confront Jacob and the wolf boys are there. Oh. Uh. Because... It is low-key one of my favorite things, oh, and also one of my least favorite things. Oh, God. It was bad boys, bad boys. So, like, all these fucking shirtless men <laughs> yep. coming in and, like, hounding on Bella, and it was like, I'm not okay with any of this. And, like, it was just so, like, she's just this, like, fucking, like, I don't want to, like, dis- be dismissive of Bella, because she's very capable and she's great. However... Compared to these, like, beefcake men who turn into wolves. Like, she's not really threatening, you know? Oh, absolutely. So, like, really don't have to attack this woman who's, like, just coming in your space to talk to Jacob because he's being a shithead. The worst. And, like, they're all just, like, hounding in and, like, being super aggressive. And, like, Jacob has to come in and be also aggressive wolf boy. And they all have to, like, pounce on each other. And it's fucking nasty. It's so objectifying. There's a few things, though. Bella knocking on their door and Billy being like, sup, Bella? And she's like, I don't have time to deal with you, Billy. I need to go make sure that Jacob's okay. And there he is. He he lives in a literal closet on a twin-size bed that he cannot fit on, which is so pure. (laughs) And she's like, oh, okay, he's sleeping. Cool. (laughs) And then looks out his window and there's these four (laughs) half-naked men they are not naked on the bottoms. <laughs> I always need to clarify this. Um, and she just sees them all walking. And of course, they're walking side by side, Ugh. which is very cute. And she's like, I got to go throw hands. <laughs> and I just, the idea that she just has the audacity to just go up to Sam and just smack him around. Yeah. Just is my favorite thing. It's so it's such good. a Virgo like, thing to be like, him. Ugh. doesn't give a shit. Mm. And, of course, because he's Sam and is just so cool all the time, it's just like, Bella, 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 it's okay. And because of the fact that Paul is his right-hand man, he's like, God damn it. Like, I got to fight all the time. Let me fight. Let me go. (laughs) Oh, my God. But there's, it's so gross and objectifying of the fact that they literally have to fight to, like, take care of it. But there's a few things that in a cinematic way that I think are cool about this Mm -hmm. of the fact that Jacob like jumps over her and they had to shoot that. And also the fact that the camera ends sideways, like on the ground, which (laughs) that was was silly. (laughs) I mean, I thought it was, it could have just like not. (laughs) Yeah. And that would have been nice. That would have been not cheesy filmmaking. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was cheesy, but 
I mean, I guess that's the universe that we're in, I guess. But, like, I can still critique it. But, like, this yeah. is, there's just, like, so much ruckus going on, and the camera's like, ooh, I'm tipping over because <laughs> there's so much commotion <laughs> happening. Wow. Yeah. Um, since since we're talking about Wolf Boys, please. can we talk about Quill and Embry? <laughs> we can! My oh, babies. my... Okay, fucking... I forget which one it was. I think it was Embry. Embry deserves an Oscar. <laughs> yes. Because, like, they're both very sweet boys. Very, very sweet boys. But Embry has all of these lines that are just so good. He just always has these asides, like, whenever, like, they come in when uh, Bella and uh, Jacob are, like, making bikes and stuff. And we meet, see them for the first time. And they're like, Is, how, did Jacob tell you that you're his girlfriend? And she's like, nah, we're friends. And he's like, oh, burn! Ooh, Jacob! Ooh, how's it feel? Ooh, and it's so cute. Like, it's <laughs> so cute. I just think that they're really pure people. They're so pure. And we didn't get a lot of them. Like, we, I feel like we got a lot more of them in the book. And we got a little bit of an edited down version of their involvement in the plot. Well, and we don't hear anything about jared until this one and jared's the one who in this when they especially when they go back to emily's house when he when he's like this chick runs with vampires <gasps> oh and it's like you're telling all of our trade secrets oh god. and it's just like oh my god uh, <laughs> it's so silly he gets so defensive emery's like we don't bite and he's like speak for yourself and it's like oh my god <laughs> ew Oh my god, I just remembered we have to talk about this thing of, there's this ridiculous bit of editing during the, um, like, there's like a little montage of Bella and Jake was spending more time together and, like, building the bike and all that stuff. And fucking Bella goes to get pizza from the pizza delivery guy. (gasps) Oh my god, oh my god! She takes a slice, throws it to Jacob, and in the interim of it going to Jacob, it turns into a wrench, and it goes into his hand, and they're back in the workshop, and it's a progression of time, and it's the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yes. I'm mad about it. It's so mu- that, that's so much work. That takes so much work, and it's so ridiculous, and doesn't do anything. And it's so silly, and it looks ridiculous. And I'm mad. Yeah. I'm mad about it. Yeah, it's so wild. There's so many other ways to say that time has passed. You didn't have to take us. Sl- also, who the fuck is throwing somebody just a single slice of pizza into the fucking wind and hoping they catch it? It's that's so just irresponsible. reckless. That's ir- that's irresponsible. You just don't care about your friend getting pizza, is what I think. And that's yeah. just rude. Yep. But the fact that just it would flip over, turn into a wrench, f- go to Jacob. And just progress into another bit of the montage is the worst. Yep. It's the worst, and it hurts me. It hurts me. <laughs> yeah. I'm hurt by this movie. <laughs> yep. It took so much editing for them to try and figure out how to manifest Edward throughout this whole movie. Oh my god. <laughs> because I bet. in the movie. Or in the book, sorry, she just hears Edward. Yeah. She doesn't see him. No. So, but obviously, can you imagine if we'd watched this movie and we just, like, heard (laughs) Robert Pattinson (laughs) instead of, like, how boring. Yeah, literally. (laughs) But they put these, I don't know, those FX dots on him and tried to just, like, manifest him throughout it. (sighs) But the way that they... They mentioned it in the behind the scenes stuff is they wanted him to seem like a candle. And it was more, um, it was easier to imagine during the motorcycle scene when she was learning uh-huh. how to ride. When she rides off that he kind of just like disappears. Yeah. That he's supposed to just be more of a figment of her imagination, I guess. That's interesting that they were thinking of it as a candle, because when I saw it, I was, like, very much, like, fog, almost. You know what I mean? Mm. Because, like, he's very transparent and whatever, and, like, as soon as she walks through it, like, he definitely, like, like, dissipates, you know? And it's more like pushing him away, and it's very much like a, a rippling sort of effect. Yeah. And he just sort of, like becomes like the air or whatever when you when you said rippling i thought of jello <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Yeah, Edward's definitely like jello. Ugh, I can never have jello again. Thanks, Allie. Ew. I hate jello. I mean, I can't have it because there's gelatin in it. Gelatin, like, yeah. yeah. Gelatin's always in everything and it's fucked. You think it's you true. think you can eat it, then it fucks you. Nothing is safe. Not Nothing is snacks. safe. The fruit snacks are the worst offender. They're never it's safe. true. Unless it's Annie's, and Annie's ones are kind of gross. So, <gasps> oh, how no, dare you say that? No, it's not that they're gross. It's just they're sticky and like it's not great. You know. I love those. The strawberry lemonade fruit snacks. Are you kidding me? <sighs> they're good. We it's can't just, talk about this anymore until they're, they're just too us. sticky. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> it's the texture. It's not the taste. You can't talk about texture to me. I'm the queen of not eating anything because of texture. I just don't want to feel the need to, like, have to wash my hands immediately after having one fruit snack. You know what I mean? That's, that, that shouldn't be too much to ask. Yeah, je feel. I get you. Okay. Since we're talking about, like, the editing and stuff. Go on. The fucking pacing of this movie <laughs> is Tell me more. very interesting. Because, I mean, granted, the book is also an interesting bit of pacing. And I feel like for the first, you know, like... Oh, you mean pacing, like, 600 pages worth of pacing? <laughs> yeah. You know, listen... Fuck off. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to use words that make me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Screw you. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, the first, like, two acts, basically, of the movie are, like, much better than the first two acts of the book. Because it's a lot more condensed and it's a lot more, like, taking out the nonsense and taking out the bullshit that's not really necessary. And so it feels like it's actually going in a progression that makes sense. By the time we get to fucking Rome shit... Like, that, it takes, like, 20 minutes. And it just, there's That's too so much, real. there's too much happening. And I feel like this, exact, this happened at the end of Twilight as well. I feel like we're also talking about this. Because, like, so many things happen at once. And, like, not enough time to, like, fully do all the stuff that they wanted to do. And I feel like that happened in a little bit in the book as well. But, like, definitely not the same and as rushed feeling as the movie did. Like, yeah. it just felt so rushed. Like, they didn't go on the plane. Like, they cut out all the plane shit, and they just were, like, in a car immediately right. in Italy. And, like, it was wild. Like, it was so wild. And, like, oh, shit, he's exposing himself and whatever. And then, oh, shit, Bella's there. And, oh, shit, they're already talking to the Volturi. And, oh, shit, like, they're back home at Forks. And it's, oh, shit, and the movie's over. Like, it's not paced at all. I know that it was probably, a, I don't know, a mistake on their part to do that. But I also feel like it... I don't know, maybe it's wishful thinking on my part, but mm. I, I hope that it was intentional for them to do that because I feel like that was almost how it felt to me in the book. And that's sure. how Bella felt in a sense because of the fact that it was supposed to be kind of a fog of this time without him there mm -hmm. and that it kind of dragged on. And as soon as the possibility of Edward existing still mm -hmm. was there that she kind of woke up and I everything guess. was supposed to be in a rush again i think we're grasping at straws but i guess <laughs> but more than likely like as john green always says i don't think that the author ever intends to do stuff like that so yeah no I think that it was more so like, shit, 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 we have all this stuff to fit in because it's 600 pages worth of stuff. Yeah. Um, Stephanie's already like, fuck, this is a thousand pages. I got to keep going. I got to wrap this up real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, since we're talking about that third act, I do want to know your feelings on the fact that they added in stuff that wasn't actually in Stephanie's book, a.k.a. the fight scene with the Volturi. Fight, 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 fight. Because that was wild. It was. And it was buck wild. Arl's like, Dimitri, Felix, take care of this. A.K.A. Bella being this. Mm -hmm. And Edward's like, um, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm here. And he flips Bella over. And Felix oh, and Edward go at it. Yeah. So, like, basically the book, but, like, a little bit of a tussle. <laughs> yes. But in the movie... Felix like cracks Edward's cheek. Yeah. And it like heals over and uh, it's like so extra. No. I love this fucking stone metaphor that we're continuing to do, even in film. I know. Thank you. And when, when Bella sees that in the movie, she like screams, but like low key, she's like, oh my god. She's also like jerking off. She's like, yes! <laughs> That's my boy! Everything I've ever wanted. Mm. <laughs> 
Oh no, it's so bad. Can we talk about the sick ass robe they had Edward in? Because it was sick. It was such a look. It was I a love look. That color. Yes, it was like velvet, but also like a very deep V, which like I'm usually not a fan of, but like it's fine. It was fine. The makeup that they put on him, he looked so dead. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anybody look so tired in my whole life. <laughs> Oh my god, his under eye circles. Like, babe, have you heard of shave tape before? Oh my god. Holy shit. <sighs> also, I'm so glad that when Bella ran to him, that he just said heaven and didn't quote Billy Shakes, because yeah. my god. Which still was bad, but like, it could have been way worse. <laughs> it could have been way, way worse. Also, it doesn't matter how many times that I see this movie, every time that Bella runs to him, I get so much anxiety. Yeah. It's so, it just it's so me out. it's the only part of it that actually makes sense with her like the timing, you know, because it's supposed to be like very rushed, but also like in slow motion, you know, because yeah. like the clock is ticking and like we're almost there and there's not a lot of time left, but also like the like the last second and like Edward unbuttoning his whatever, like stepping out and she's like no, but not because <laughs> if she literally screamed in slow motion, I would have literally like left this planet. I just would not yeah. be here anymore. But, like, she does a, you know, a figurative no scream and, like, runs into him. And it, like, actually felt like a progression that made sense in her. Because in her mind, it was very much, like, also, like, very sped up. But also very much, like, ah, I gotta do this right now. Everything's happening so fast. Ah. All of those extras were fans of Twilight. Oh, Can you God. imagine <laughs> being a fan of Case Stew and getting pushed by her? Ugh, the dream. Oh my god. Please spit on me. If you're listening, just <laughs> fucking stab me, Chris Stew. <laughs> I would thank you. Oh my god. Goals. Ugh. Um <laughs> Damn. At the end, when they're voting on Bella's soul. Uh <laughs> So also, good. R.A.P. to the airport scene, because that's all I've ever wanted. R.A.P. to happen. every airport scene. I know. She just can't be fucking Ocean's 8, Ocean's 11 anymore, huh? I know. Ever. It never happens. And can never um, actually, you know, make her seem like a cognizant human being that knows how to do shit for herself, huh? I know. Ugh. It's a bummer. Uh, that those never happen. However, the soul voting doesn't happen at a table, which is for the best, because I found that it was a little bit easier that they did it in the living room. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that Bella tells Edward to shut up. <laughs> it's so good. A plus. Um, I did feel like it was more appropriate, though, to have Rosalie's apology here. Yeah. Than yeah. having it in two places. Mm-hmm. I thought that Carlisle and Edward talking in this was sad and no. sweet, so. Daddy, my boy. I know. Oh. It was cute. Also, Jasper's little bit about not wanting to kill her. And that was cute. <laughs> and Belle just being like, yeah, yeah, sure, totally. <laughs> so. Um, uh, the actor who plays Emmett, like, really gets into it, and I love it so much. Because, like, I you can, adore him. You can hear... Like, him in the book, like, how, like, pumped he is about stuff, but, like, it's nothing compared to, like, his actual, like, physicality and being like, yeah, we're gonna fuck this Voltori. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> yes! I love Kellen Lutz so much. Oh, he's, he's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> yeah, I adore him. Oh, shit, uh, another, like, little difference also. Please. Uh, is that, like, Edward does the whole, like, oh, you were so stupid to believe that, like, I was, like, telling oh, the yeah. truth and stuff happens when... They, meet, they see each other for the first time, which, yeah. like, is wild. And yes. Which, I mean, I it's interesting, because, like, I don't know, I feel like it wasn't necessary to have it, like, after the fact, you know? Like, in that whole separate scene or whatever, so I guess, like, whatever. Right. But, like, it's already, like, real high-stakes emotion. Like, Bella has not seen you in months, and, like, you've been, like, the cause of all of her problems and anxieties and depression and stuff. So, like, the fact that you were, like, hey, saw you for the first time in literal months, and also you're real, and you almost, like, killed yourself for because of me and you thought I was dead. Let me, let me put some shame on you a little bit and tell you how you shouldn't even have believed me when I said I didn't want you. Like, God. Yep. The most. I mean, obviously that scene is garbage anyway, but, like, especially garbage. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. No. No, thank you. No, 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 no. 
Speaking of gross and no thank you, yeah. I know you have a lot of feelings about the end of this. Oh God, awful. So, I'm oh, sorry. Fuck. Like it's, the ending of the book was already like not great, right? Because it's new yeah. moon, but. <laughs> Like, we had the whole conversation about him wanting to, like, if he were to turn her, he would want to marry her, you know? Which is, like, mm, love your antiquated views on relationships. Eddie, yes. my boy. Uh, <laughs> but, but like, the fact that this fucking director was like, you know it would be great? You know it would be fucking solid? If the last line of this movie was marry me, and then credits. Yeah. No! Uh, no. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, thank you. No. Uh, <laughs> not good directing, no. sir. None of that. Especially because it's not just that. It's Bella telling Jake that she loves him, mm-hmm. but that she will always choose Edward. Yep. And Jake being like, rawr. <laughs> and I'm then, mad. <laughs> I'm mad, rawr. <laughs> and leaving. <laughs> And then them taking a conversation that was supposed to be at the end of the story, but not the end of the story, and moving it to being the absolute last scene. Yeah. And making him propose her gasp and then roll creds. Ew. If I I had to pay money and see that in theaters, I would have thrown hands at the projector, at everyone involved, the whole audience. I would have fought everyone. Oh, it was a very big reception. I was longing for people to fight. I was alone watching this, and I just wanted someone to fight. This was a huge... People loved this ending. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It set records as the biggest midnight opening in domestic box office history. Holy shit. So. While we're on, well, like, sort of the topic of, like... Team Edward, Team Jacob stuff, because that ending is very much like, wow, marriage and Edward, and, like, he's the one, that's it. Yep. This whole movie, like, I could not find anything redeemable about our sweet wolf boy. Like, I just, he was such a shithead, and, like, he was in the book, but especially in the movie, I was like, I don't even know why anyone would be Team Jacob at this point. Like, he's a shit, I mean, granted, Edward, total shithead. Obviously, Bella's better than all of these dumbass men in her life. However... Jake was just being a fuckboy the whole time. It was annoying. Well, and see, that's the thing. It's like, as a character, he has so much potential yep. to be an amazing character yep. who loves Bella and supports her mm-hmm. and allows her to chase her bliss. And doesn't want and to d- win her. No, and, and doesn't objectify her and allows her to do whatever she needs to do. But instead, it's he's been twisted to become this potential love interest, which is so gross. And I don't like that at all. It's not good. No. It's not no. good. They should be friends who support each other. And <laughs> Why it's can't so Bella nasty. have friends? Why, Why can't she can't have friends? I don't understand. Why can she it's not It's going to be in my have... grave. Literally, why didn't... Why... Couldn't we let Bella Swan have one goddamn friend? And why can she not have, especially a, a guy friend yep. who allows her to build platonic intimacy mm-hmm. and build up trust mm-hmm. and allow her to see what it's like to have safe, good, fun relationships. Yeah. Not everything to has to be romantic or sexual. No. People can no. just love each other and not have to fuck each other or want to be in a romantic relationship. Thank you. No, it doesn't. Uh. I just want her to be able to have fun and not everything has to make her be reminded of trauma. I'm exhausted. I am also exhausted, <laughs> but I cannot in good faith end this conversation without talking about one of my literal favorite scores of all time, okay, which is this go. one. Because Alexandre motherfucking Duplat <laughs> makes the best scores ever, and I will literally throw hands with anybody who tells me otherwise. <laughs> because, okay, here's the thing. He's my sweet, sweet French composer love of all time. <laughs> he makes amazing pieces of art. Like, he has made some of the best stuff ever. Um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Moonrise Kingdom, 
both of the Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows scores. Are you fucking kidding me? All very the King's solid. Speech. He's got a good record. Yeah. This one was performed by the London Symphony or- Orchestra. So, like, oh, are you kidding me? It's supposed to be, like, romantic and dramatic and swooping. It's supposed to be Italian, but it feels very French to me. Both things. <laughs> I don't care. Um, the the score for when Edward leaves. Are you kidding me? Oh Fuck my off. God. Like, I... Every time I listen to it, it makes me want to cry. The only thing that keeps me from not breaking down during that scene is the fact that the scene where they filmed that had a bunch of huge mosquitoes where Robert and Kristen kept smacking them off each other and couldn't take themselves seriously when they were filming it. So, God bless. (laughs) Um, Also, that whole soundtrack is the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's so indie. I can't handle it. I will say, the soundtrack is really good, and I'm mad about it. But also... It's really good. uh, While looking at the soundtrack, because I wanted to talk about it, um, turns out there's a website devoted just to the soundtrack called BreakingDawnTheSoundtrack.com. Great. And that just seems like the most. Oh my god. This is the worst website I've ever seen. (laughs) <laughs> literally it's yeah just, i run it it's just an ad for the fucking soundtrack and also breaking dawn part two and also like it's just like hey, a get photo- off there that might have spoilers it's Cody. just promotional photos oh my god but just a blog about that hasn't been updated since 2012 yeah i run that great <laughs> this has spoilers on it cody get off there There's, i'm not seeing anything so it's great but it's literally just like the worst website i've ever seen anyway wow a bruno mars video is auto playing on this get off here this has spoilers it listen it's fine it's really not fine <laughs> it's fine <laughs> um we definitely need to talk about the song possibility because <gasps> are you kidding me <laughs> yeah man fucking lucky lee that, owns my entire asshole uh yeah that song makes me still want to rip my soul out she's always so, been doing it she's been the queen forever but she's yeah. better recognize okay always forever it's the best. The fucking killers. Muse's song here is always good because obviously, <sighs> fucking Death okay, Cab go is on there. Death Cab. Oh, Lupe Fiasco. God. Hello. Bonnie Vare's on there. Hello. Holy shit. Okay, go. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Oh, all of these soundtracks are always the best. God damn it. Even Muse is on there. See, oh. Fuck. See, that's what I said. I feel like you're not listening to me. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed by how good this music is. God damn. Oof. The the movies may be shit. They're not. But they the soundtrack. Are. Don't kid Allie. Don't listen to Cody. We can't have this podcast <laughs> if we're not, like, on some sort of ground here. Like, these movies are garbage. You have to, like, if anything, we could have so many different opinions about the books, but you have to meet me halfway <laughs> here. These, this, is fil- this is cinematic garbage. <laughs> this is where films go to die. It's a dumpster full of trash. You have to, you can't. You can't live this life forever, Allie. I know. I can be you halfway in the music because the music is their bops and it's great. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like it was reverse psychology, and even though I was the one who thought of this podcast idea, it's all been an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it has. Just damn sometimes i think even though i said that this was still your idea oh yeah i'm still pulling strings here my man is this being john malkovich but me oh my god i think i'm having is this the truman show but just twilight over and over and over again i think i'm having an existential crisis (laughs) that's into the twilight folks sorry (laughs) that's the fucking show oh no Uh. oh no oh I'm so excited to start our new book, a.k.a. Yes. the worst one out of all of them. Uh, next week, I have to buy this book, but fucking get ready. Aren't you going to try and find it at the library? Um, well, I might. Or is the cult still have it? Yeah, I will give you an update next week and see how many copies are available at my library. But, but I also, there's my thrift store is having a sale tomorrow, so I'll probably fucking get it there because... All the Twilight books are at every thrift store that's ever been alive, so. And who knows now, since we have more listeners, they may be <laughs> hoarding all of them. Yeah, just send me one, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so, new book, new month. Ooh. It's going to be fresh and wow. clean. Yes. That's so nice. Okay. I love that a lot. Ugh. Do we have a sick fan fiction? 
Oh, you don't know how sick it is, Cody. Oh, no. Oh, is, this one embarrasses me a lot. Oh, no. It's really bad. I'm sorry. Oh, no, Allie. This one is called Confessions of a Triple X Addict. Uh, and it was written by Lustful Muse. Uh, and it was, well, it was published June 5th of 2011. However... It was updated two days ago. No. It has 11 chapters. Oh, <laughs> However, God. I'm reading from chapter one. Great. The description is called, Bella didn't move to Forks willingly. She was forced there after Renee discovered the adult site she was running, <laughs> as well as the no. numerous videos she had posted. No. Now, Bella's on the prowl, and Edward is her target, <laughs> assuming she doesn't get distracted. <laughs> Snarky Bella slash virgin vamp Edward. Can I just say that and this be done? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, just reading this makes me so embarrassed. Okay. I've taught sex ed, and just reading that made me embarrassed. That's so bad. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Cody, I'm so sorry. Okay. Just tear it off like a band-aid, man. I had started the site a few months ago, but after several failed attempts at getting a part-time job, guys were always lusting after me anyways, so I figured why not bank from it. I took some risque photos, uploaded them to my site, and within a few days had a pretty solid following. My popularity increased within the addition of short videos. This is hell. My this is hell. And in the nude. I couldn't believe the stuff. Guys, you guys don't understand. My eyes are covering the screen. I can barely see them. Uh, okay, sorry. Changing a light bulb naked had been a favorite. Uh, it was strange, but I rolled from it. Okay, I can't. I can't keep reading this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm closing this tab. I'm sorry. I can't do it anymore. I can't. I'm sorry. I quit. I can't believe you could go through pencil dick, but this was too much for you. I'm literally, my cheeks are so hot. I can't anymore. As we say, forks. Get bit. <laughs> Oh my god. This is an Earbud Media production. You can follow us on Twitter at Earbud Media. If you want to pitch a show to the network, you can do so at bit.ly forward slash earbud pitch. And how about you check out one of the other Earbud Media shows like Fem as Fuck or Strange Little People, all of which you can find on the Earbud Media Twitter. You can find this show at Into the Twilight on Twitter and anywhere else that you follow things on social media. You can also rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, which would help the show a lot. Or fill out a quick survey at bit.ly forward slash into the survey. The feedback is really helpful, and we're actually taking it into consideration and changing the show. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash into the twilight. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get access to all sorts of bonus content. Our artwork is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at your ghost host 44 on Instagram, and our music is done by Eli Krauss, who you can find at KrausFilms.com. And the Earbud Media intro and outro is done by KB Smith, who you can find at KB underscore underscore Smith on Twitter. You can find Allie on the internet at 23 of You can find me at Cody Captures. You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, John? I just wanted to uh, confirm that we were recording Monday. Yes. Uh, what are we recording for? Oh, it's our new podcast. Our podcast. The, the, the Strange Little People one, Strange right? Little People, yeah. Yeah, the one on Earbud Media Production. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. You can the, listen to it. The one that we update every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, dude. When we have new guests all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, and we talk about current events and stuff. People should listen to it, right? Like, yeah. It's, it's I, really cool. I think people would like it. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but I, mean, I hope you would. Did you put out the ad yet? The uh, flyers? Yeah, I, I'm doing it right now. As we speak. No, you're sitting down. You're no, not... no, this is happening right now as we speak. John, why did my hand just go through you? Oh my god. John. We'll talk about it next week. <laughs>